hello and welcome to another video and I hope you're all good or at least as well as you can be during these weird times. Now in my last video I looked at why you might want to shoot medium format film in 2020 and I'll leave a link above to that video so you can go and check it out. Uh, but in that video I did discuss that I would do a bit more of an in-depth walk around the Mamiya 645 which is the camera that I chose to, to buy to shoot more medium format film with. So we'll get into the pros and cons of this camera and some of the features shortly. But I do quickly want to say you might want to check out my Instagram feed so you can see the kind of photos that I'm taking so that you understand why I would choose to go down the film route. And also this isn't sponsored or endorsed in any way by Mamiya. This is literally a camera that I decided to purchase myself, paid for with my own money. And I'll, uh, again, I'll explain why I made those choices, why I chose this specific camera. So if you're looking at a Mamiya 645 to buy for yourself, if this is the kind of route that you're looking at going down, we'll discuss some of the kind of pros and cons. But this camera uh, is a, an import from Japan that I purchased. It cost me around about 500 pounds and came with a lens and a few additional items such as the auto winder and the, uh, the AE viewfinder, which again, go into detail shortly about why they're important. But it is a fantastic camera. It's a, a more modern camera than some of the older medium format cameras like I've previously shot with the Bronica ETRS. And again, I'll explain why this wasn't really doing it for me and why this does. Um, but the only thing that I would say is that if you're based, certainly if you're based in England, I'm not sure about other countries, but this was a Japanese import and I ended up having to pay the customs on top of that. So it cost me an additional £100 on top of the £500 um, just to actually get it through customs because it was imported. So whenever you're looking at purchasing these things, and this was an eBay special, um, obviously consider if you need to pay customs in the country that you're purchasing it. But for around about £600, um, I'm happy with the purchase, but that is a big chunk of money. That is, you know, that's you're going to get a decent quality digital camera for that kind of money. So it's very much an investment. So very quickly, why I chose not to shoot with the Bronica. So the Bronica is a great camera. Uh, it's you know very much traditional medium format. Uh, it's got the, the kind of downward viewfinder and. It just wasn't very comfortable shooting in the street. There was, there's a lot of manual features, a lot of things to consider when you're shooting with a camera like this. And I just found that I didn't want to pick it up. I didn't want to go out and kind of run around and take shots with this. It felt like more of a chore. So I was always looking for a camera that felt a little bit more modern in the hand and had some of those kind of features and things that were more familiar to me. So I looked around and kind of settled upon the 645 Pro. Now that's not to say that there aren't better cameras out there and things that might suit your needs, but for my particular needs, this ticked all of the boxes. So as with many manufacturers, there's all sorts of different versions of this camera. The originals were great cameras, but again, very similar to the Bronicas, a lot of manual functions on them. And as they've developed over the years, there's all sorts of additional things being added to it. All the way through to they did a, a basically like a, a fully auto and auto focus version of this camera. And I think in 2008, somewhere around there, they reintroduced various different color versions of these. Did like a limited run that were thousands of pounds if you can find one. Um, but the reason that I chose the 645 Pro in particular was basically it feels a lot more modern. It feels like a, a newer camera and there's a lot of features on there that you can kind of rely on. Now this particular camera that I've picked up has a few additional items that you don't get as standard such as the auto winder. So on a traditional medium format camera you probably take the shot and you have to wind it on to the next frame. This does that for you. Um, now it's absolutely not essential, it's perfectly fine just to shoot with a manual winder but it does help make it feel a little bit more modern in that respect. Um, it goes up to uh, one thousandth of a second in terms of shutter speed which is great if you're shooting in kind of harsh midday light and things because obviously being set at a box speed with your film, so I'm, commonly I'm shooting on Portra 400 
um, obviously you want a faster shutter speed so that you can still take advantage of some of those shallower apertures. Uh, but again, won't get too much into the technicalities about how to shoot with it, more just the camera itself. Now, taking a look at the back, it comes with film cartridges. So this is a 120 film camera. So you have to take that into consideration when you're actually purchasing one of these, that you're going to be buying 120 film spools. Now they are a little bit more expensive than standard 35mm film, um, but again, if you're kind of getting into film photography, you'll probably be aware that there's always going to be additional costs with what you're doing. And the film cartridge sits on the back of the camera, and the idea is that if you're wanting to shoot different film stocks, so commonly I'll shoot uh, Portrait 400, uh, but you might want to shoot such a uh, films like Cine Still 800T, which is more commonly used at night. Rather than having to use an entire roll of film up just so that you can change the film, you can buy various different film cartridges and swap them in and out as you need them. So I have purchased an additional cartridge um, and I do use that for 800T. Um, although the, some of the films do get really expensive, I think the 800T itself runs at about £25 a roll. So again, you're not going to burn through that too quickly. And that is another consideration with these cameras, is that you're getting around about 15 shots on a roll, as opposed to standard 35mm where you're probably getting around about 36 exposures on a film. So again, your shot count's going to drop drastically but I think that trains you just to make sure that you're taking photos of things that you really want to be taking photos. So there are some be benefits to it as well. Now, there's a lot of modern features on this that you probably won't find on older cameras, such as the fact that it's basically got a hot shoe. It's got a mirror lockup mode as well. Um, you can add a shutter release to it um, so that you can do longer exposures as well. So it really does feel a little bit more like a modern camera. Now another thing to take into consideration when purchasing these cameras is the fact that you're probably going to end up picking up a few different lenses. Now the original lens that came with this was the 80mm lens uh, and it's a great lens, really sharp, very happy with it. But the only problem is that when you're shooting 120 film, it basically has a basic like crop factor to that. So an 80mm lens on medium format is probably going to be around about 50mm, whereas I actually went out and purchased the um, 55mm lens, which works out, I think it's probably around about 28mm, something like that. Um, so again, there is this basic crop factor when you shoot in a much lar larger negative, the 120 film. Um, now these are both faster lenses, they're both f2.8 because I really want to try and add some shallow depth of field in terms of doing things like portraits and stuff. So I did want the faster lenses, um, but obviously you can still get by perfectly fine with the slower lenses, especially if you're doing things like landscape and architecture, where you're probably going to be shooting sort of f8, f16, those kind of apertures anyway. Um, so lens choice is going to be a consideration for you. Now the actual lenses themselves that I've seen aren't too expensive in the grand scheme of things. I think the 55mm cost me £120 and again that was a Japanese import so you have to be careful. In, uh, no actually this came from Germany so there wasn't any customs on that. Um, but you do have to consider where you're going to purchase these things from. Now commonly that will be eBay so again just need to be careful are there going to be any additional duties or taxes when you're buying these items. Um, in terms of other features, one of the big things with this particular camera was it came with the AE viewfinder. So on a lot of medium format cameras, you get this top down viewfinder. So you're actually looking down to waist level and composing your image like this. And if you've ever shot on a camera like this, can be quite tricky to line things up because basically the image is inverted. So it can be a little bit tricky when you're out on the streets shooting like that, certainly if you're trying to capture a, a moment that's you know pretty fleeting. So one of the things that I was very conscious of when I purchased it was that I wanted a more traditional kind of viewfinder so that I could actually lift it up to my face, take the shot as I see it without having to worry about kind of inverting the camera and moving it around and things. But also the biggest feature with this particular viewfinder is that it 
is basically a light meter as well. So normally you would have to work out your own exposure values. So you would carry a separate light meter and you'd evaluate the scene, work out what you need for the uh, film stock that you're shooting. This does all of that for you. So when I'm looking through the viewfinder, I'll be able to see whether it's going to be overexposed, underexposed, and what values I kind of need to change. And more commonly than that, obviously that's going to be the actual shutter speed that you're changing or the aperture, because you are fixed at that box speed when you're shooting film. Um, so that was pretty essential to me and being basically like a spot meter, it does a pretty good job of evaluating what I'm taking photos of and so far I've been really happy with the kind of exposures that I'm getting. I think the, the actual light metering in this is pretty accurate. So for me that was a bit of a, an essential purchase. Now I will add that you can buy all of these items separate. So things like the viewfinder, spare cartridges, the auto winder on the side, they can all be purchased separately and that's another beautiful thing about these particular cameras is they're incredibly modular. You can add to them with what you need. It also means that you don't have to spend all that money out in one go. So you can probably pick the body up with a lens and a cartridge for, I don't know, I would guess around three or four hundred pounds and then you can add to it as you need to. So you might go and pick up, pick up a, a AE viewfinder maybe around about 120, 150 pounds, but you don't have to do that all in one go. So there's a, a lot of bonuses to be said about that. So what are the things that I don't like about this camera? Well, in truth, I haven't found many things that I don't like about it. One of the things that you will notice straight off the bat is obviously the size. It is a large camera, there's no getting away from that. Not as large as some of the other medium format cameras by any means, but again, I think it strikes a pretty good balance uh, being a, a 645 negative between being medium format but still being relatively portable to, to carry around. And for the kind of shooting that I do, I've not had too many issues with the actual size and using it for long periods of time. Um, but it is definitely a consideration if you're not used to larger and slightly heavier cameras. Um, so that is one thing that I think, again, if you're looking at medium format cameras, you probably already know that you're going to have to carry a bit of bulk and a bit of weight around with you. So that is a consideration. In terms of actually handling and things like that, I have really haven't found any negatives with it. It's more than comfortable enough to shoot with. Um, again, all of the features that I need and stuff have worked pretty well. One of the other big downsides with buying cameras like this is they're more commonly than not going to be second hand. I think it'll be very rare if you find an original unused version. Um, so there's always a consideration that something might go wrong with them and they're always going to be a little bit more difficult to get fixed than most modern digital cameras. So if a shutter or something goes in one of my modern cameras, I know that it's going to be expensive, but at least there'll be people that can do that. When you're buying older cameras, sometimes these skills just aren't there and you might not be able to get it fixed. Now, touch wood, I haven't come across any issues with this that need to get fixed, uh, but also being a slightly more modern camera these are still fairly serviceable. Whereas when you're getting into older medium format cameras, you're probably gonna find it's fewer and further between the people that can actually repair them. But these are still relatively modern, so you shouldn't really have too many issues with being able to get them serviced, but it is a consideration when you're obviously buying a 20, 30 year old camera, so. One of the other big considerations, of course, is cost. And like I say, this setup cost me around about 600 pounds, which is far from cheap. And if it is your first time getting into medium format, then there is definitely gonna be cheaper options out there, but it might mean that you need to put in a little bit more of the legwork in terms of um, having to understand like, things like exposure and stuff. This is a great starter camera because it takes care of a lot of those awkward things for you, but that does come at a bit more of a premium. It does come at a bit more of a cost. So it really depends what balance you want to strike between spending money and making your life easier or saving money and putting in a little bit of that additional work yourself.
So in terms of the actual handling and shooting experience with this camera, again, it is a weighty camera, there's no doubt about that. And it is something that you definitely need two hands on. You're not very easily gonna bring it up to your eye with one hand and shoot like that. So it is far more of a considered process. You are naturally gonna be slower shooting with a camera like this. But the ergonomics have actually been great. I find it a really comfortable camera to hold as long as you can take the weight. The addition of the auto winder on the side, that additional grip has made it really comfortable to shoot with and you can carry it around in one hand fairly comfortably. So I do think that that's a great option as well. The only thing that I would say about the auto winder is it takes six batteries and that adds quite a chunk of weight to just the actual grip itself. But it feels really sturdy in the hand. The build quality is great. There's nothing on there that feels particularly flimsy or like it's going to break or anything. Um, so again, really pleased with that. And it is the kind of camera that is quite comfortable just to throw into a bag. It feels sturdy, it feels chunky, and you don't feel like you're going to do too much damage with this. Unlike some older cameras where you're almost scared to pick them up, basically. Um, the ergonomics, like I say, really comfortable, no issues in terms of that. You will find a lot of the time that you probably want to shoot from a tripod with these kind of cameras anyway. So again, that takes out some of the weight issue if you're going to be setting this up on a tripod and shooting, um, you know, in that kind of format anyway. The only other thing to say about the shooting experience with this is it absolutely eats batteries, the auto winder. And I have been in a couple of situations where the batteries are going in this and it feels like it's not pulling the film through as efficiently as it should do. Um, and that can be a little bit disconcerting when you're not quite sure whether you're onto the next frame or not. Um, so it's always worth carrying a few additional batteries if you are using an auto winder with it. However, all in all, I would say that I'm incredibly happy with this and I've really enjoyed shooting with it. The actual process of shooting medium format film has been great and something that I really want to do a lot more of. So it's very much encouraged me to get out there and want to shoot with this camera and I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to reach for this rather than my digital cameras purely because I get a lot more satisfaction from actually shooting with a medium format film camera. Now, on that, I have also been developing the film at home and scanning the negatives at home, which as I promised in my first video, I will go through the full process. So the next video I will do, I'll take a look at uh, color developing at home. So the C41 process, and a lot of people find this really overwhelming and a little bit scary to try to do. But honestly, I think as long as you take the right kind of steps to it, there's not a lot that you really need to worry about. And I've been really satisfied with the kind of results that I'm getting from it. So the next video in this little series will be about that. So what are my final thoughts on this camera? Well, I've absolutely loved shooting with it and strangely, and I know it sounds a bit weird, but I find myself reaching for this more than I do things like the Canon EOS R. And I think part of that is I do love the film aesthetic. I love the, the kind of style of the shots that are coming out of the camera, but also I just enjoy the, the kind of more, I don't know, the more connected experience that you get with the camera. The fact that you're having to really consider some of the, the exposure values and things and make sure that you're absolutely spot on with what you're doing it before actually firing off a shot rather than letting all the camera do the work and taking some of that enjoyment out of it. So I've really enjoyed shooting with this camera and can't wait to do a lot more shooting with it. Uh, now, as I say, I am developing at home and scanning at home, so I'll go through that process in future videos. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do consider subscribing and leaving a like below if you've enjoyed it. And if you have shot with a medium format camera, such as a 645 or any other medium format cameras, leave a comment below just so you can explain what you like and what you don't like about them and what you might change if you're buying a medium format camera in the future. So again, hope you've enjoyed the video. It'd be great to catch you in another one soon and I hope you all keep safe.